welcome everyone. This is Chris and uh, thanks for coming by. We're having a wonderful time here in the studio. We just uh, created this beautiful water uh, watercolor painting, flowers. We did a beautiful bouquet of flowers in a vase. Um, I was just doing some finishing touch-ups just now as uh, I was getting prepared to do this uh, intro to the video here, the first part, um, where we're going to show the um, photograph. Um, I found a nice photograph online, so I'll show that on my cell phone. This is the finished painting. I'll move this out of the way and we'll sort of uh, focus in a little more on this. I did some touch-ups, you'll notice, um, to this painting. Um, I did more shadowing with the purple uh, ultramarine violet underneath these leafy forms on these vine, vines on the tablecloth. So I looked at it and I noticed that it did look like it needed some extra shadowing. I did some more shadowing under the flowers here at the top of the vase. And I also did a little more shadowing on the vase itself on the side where these leafy forms are as well. Uh, up on this upper portion of the leafy forms on this vine on this side. And again some more shadowing over here on the tablecloth where these leaf forms would cast some shadows over on this side. So. My shadowing, I kind of did that on my own, trying to just go by feel. It's better if you kind of work out your shadows with using the sub the actual subject matter, whether it's the um, bouquet of flowers in the photograph. However, sometimes you can enhance the look of a painting by adding some shadows or even sometimes t removing some shadows that might not look that pleasant. That's up to you as an artist, and it, it takes time. If you're new at, newer at watercolors, don't worry about it you'll figure out that kind of a subtle type of design change as you go. And more of the advanced uh, followers here, you know, people on here on that you're following, you're advanced uh, and been, have you been painting a long time, you know, you'll, you'll know that that's not always an easy uh, task trying to add in shadows or, you know, sort of um, work with uh, maybe uh, modifying your shadows in your paintings. That can be really difficult. Sometimes it doesn't go well and sometimes it works out good. I think it looks good here. It actually, I just tried to do my best to think about where those shadows would be on the uh, tablecloth according to the light coming across the picture from the right side. So, all right. I hope everyone has fun doing this painting. Let's get right into it. We'll start out with the pencil sketch. And before we do that, let's look at the photograph one time. So we will slide this here and you can also I'll zoom in on this and if you want you can maybe somehow do a screen capture and work from this if you'd like that would work too All right, so we're going to get started now. We saw the picture we're going to work from. We saw the photograph, um, the finished painting. Um, we'll do the uh, drawing right now, the pencil drawing. So we'll get started on that. We'll have a fun time here. Um, I always mention, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, here on this channel, we do every type of watercolor painting imaginable. We do flowers, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes. Um, we also uh, do uh, technique videos and go into the details of watercolor, palettes, paints, tools, the trade. So we kind of cover a little bit of everything in watercolor, but we definitely, our main focus is creating paintings and learning how to use the, the brushes, the, the watercolor paints, the, the water, the paper, the drawings, the pencil drawings. We try to get a good, solid, uh, fundamental um, uh, picture of uh, how watercolor is done. Hopefully you're going to keep uh, coming back to this channel and over and over practicing some of the things that you like. Some paintings you might not care for so much. Totally understandable. But hopefully most times you'll be able to find something you like and even back in the archives on my channel there's many videos there too that you can research and some of them don't have the greatest of production. I've been working on uh, always bettering my cameras and microphones and my setup and everything. So 
Um, some of the older videos are a little bit rough around the edges, but in any case, there's still some really good um, valuable uh, paintings there and information. So sometimes it's not too, uh, not too bad if you're looking for really good information because I was always packing all of my videos since I first started with uh, a ton of information uh, about watercolor and uh, design and so forth. So let's get right into it here. I'm going to use a piece of office paper. And what I'll do is we'll just make the mental note um, that we're going to do a portrait style painting of uh, beautiful vase and flowers, roses and lilies and ferns. Um, so we're just going to notice that our painting is in an orientation of the portrait style. So we have a portrait style. So we would frame our painting like this when we're finished. Our watercolor paper is going to be set up like this in a portrait fashion, vertical versus uh, horizontally, which would be a landscape. So that's sort of a landscape style with the painting um, with the rectangle uh, long ways on the horizontal line. And then here the portrait is the um, the portrait is on the vertical, the uh, rectangle. So just a quick note of that. Now with the, and you can also change it, you can make this into more of a square shape, your paper. You can trim your paper down and make it square. Or you can even take a painting that we're going to do right now and then just turn the paper and do it in a landscape format if you want. And then you just would have to remember you're going to be leaving some spaces on the sides of your, your painting that are going to be maybe negative um, space. So I don't know if that looked that great, but you could set up some things on the side, maybe a teapot or uh, a wine bottle or something else to fill in the space to make it more interesting. But here we're just going to stick with our main... Uh, vase and some flowers here and the main thing we want to do is we want to make sure we fill up the page with our subject matter so so our you know we want to have the our subject matter our bouquet of flowers we want to have that uh, dramatically set up on our page so that we're filling the whole rectangle with our subject matter. Um, sometimes what can happen is, um, and I've done this myself too years ago when I first started doing design and thinking about design, I would sometimes forget that um, it can be very unpleasant to have just maybe a small bouquet of flowers like this. And then all this negative space around here where there's nothing. So essentially, if we don't enlarge and make sure that we fill up our space with our bouquet, the, the composition is going to look a little bit, you know, it just won't look as powerful and as exciting if we were to do it like this and then put the bouquet like that. That would not look as good and as exciting because it's really unless we had other things in the painting, in the design that might make it exciting. You could put in, you know, a window, maybe wallpaper, maybe a wine bottle, some fruit, things like that, a coffee cup. Then you can start doing that. You can fill in the rectangle with other information. That's okay, but if we were just to put one vase and some flowers and just leave it in the center like so and nothing in the uh, negative space around it that doesn't look as pleasing so you'll always be best off trying to fill up your rectangle with lots of subject matter just a little tidbit of information that's usually for possibly people that are just starting out and you're uh, laying out your designs of your paintings it can really be helpful to remember that you just try to fill up your rectangle with lots of information your subject matter um, to avoid that, uh, sometimes that composition where it's just something very small in the center of the, of the paper. And then we have all that empty space around. 
Okay, so um, for all the pros, we're just going to keep working our way here and having fun and practicing our drawing skills. And um, we're going to start here. I'll start with my vase down here. And we're going to go up like so. Do my rows here. And I'll just start to work around here. And I'm just contour drawing around. We're doing the lily here. And there's another rose here. And sometimes what we can do is uh, we can leave the details of our roses and some of our shapes and our lilies here. We can leave the details um, until we start to paint. So we can paint in a lot of details so we don't have to do the drawing as as detailed as like we might think. So sometimes uh, doing less details in the drawing can be a benefit because then, th then you can work on the details with your brushwork and uh, it makes it easier. Um, too many pencil lines, if I was to try to draw every detail in this it would be kind of kind of unnecessary and it would be more difficult once I go to paint it. So if I leave things a little bit, um, a little bit uh, unfinished, that is much better. And. Okay, and we're just going to do a couple, there's a fern here, and another, we have some, I'll, what I do is if it's a, a dark value, like a dark green leaf, I'll kind of shade it in a little bit, and that'll help me to um, differentiate that between the white roses and the lilies. So when I see a green leaf and I draw that leaf, I quickly just add a little shading into it. This way I know when I'm going in and painting, this is going to be a dark, darker value, a darker tonal value with the green leaves here and there. And we'll continue on here. We have another flower there. And we have some more of those green leaves, so I'm going to shade these in. And we just make our green leaves like so. Just a couple uh, indications, nothing too fancy. If I can get the overall idea of the leaves here. That's good. And again, you can always, when we start to paint, we can add in other things with our paintbrush or even go back in with our pencil and add a few things in once we've started our painting and we're kind of working through it. So don't ever feel like your pencil your first pencil drawing as you're doing this with our contour drawing, don't ever feel like that's just like you can't change it or you can't modify it. You can always modify your drawing and you can always change your drawing. You can always erase something too if you are starting to paint and you realize maybe there's too much information and you need to remove a little bit of a section or something. You, you take your needed eraser and you just erase a little bit of a you know, spot or two if you need to. Um, and it's always a work in progress. And I'm working.
walking around here and we have and sometimes my composition might not be exactly what's in reality I might have um, left out something but it, as long as I keep on the course of like as we're doing what these we're, as we're contour drawing these um, flowers and shapes and things we can improvise I'm improvising some areas like I notice it's not exactly the way the photograph that I'm working from is that's okay That's a darker leaf there. And another darker leaf form there. And once we start painting again, we can add in some things if we want. And It's another darker uh, green leaf form there, and there as well. And then I'm going to come back down here and travel up here. And there's some more green leafy forms here. So, and a few more leaves like that. I noticed that I might have, I want to try to, so I just use the kneaded eraser and just try to change the, the feel of that a little bit. It looked kind of funny going the same way as this, this uh, leaf, these uh, stems and, and leaf forms here, these hanging leaves here. And uh, what else do we have here? We have a good amount of, we have a good amount of detail, a lot of detail actually. And maybe I'll do another fern shape over here. Okay, I think that's plenty of information. We've got our drawing done now. Um, we're gonna put, I'm going to put a table back here, just the indication of the tabletop. Like so. And this, this looks good. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll take some time right now, just relax a little bit for a few minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll start our painting. Um, hope you are enjoying this so far and we'll, we'll get started in just a few seconds. All right, so we're back and we're going to start painting. <clears throat> I'm just going to use um, my uh, usual brushes that I would normally use, a round brush. Uh, this is a Da Vinci number no. 5 travel brush, Klinsky, Klinsky Sable round brush. Um, also, I have uh, two um, number six and number eight uh, needlepoint brushes. I use those all the time with flower style paintings. And we have um, also a larger um, number eight uh, Raphael uh, Kalinsky Sable round brush. So we have um, round brushes and then some needlepoint brushes here. And I think we can get most of the painting done with a number five here, this Da Vinci um, Kalinsky uh, Sable round brush and I usually I just uh, when I'm painting I I just start out with fresh clean water and we'll just get right into the um, some of the colors and shapes that we have um, 
let's see, let's get, we'll start out. All those are in crimson, and this is rose matter. And we could start maybe here, and I'm just going to start. That's the color. I'm going to go straight into the color here. And just have some fun and make those nice uh, curvy lines in there. And what I'll do is I'll wait until this dries, until I make some of the lighter tonal values in the flower. So I'll start out I'll also take a little bit of cobalt blue just to change that a little bit. So there's some darker shadow areas in that part of the flower. So we have some of the darker shadow areas there. And then I'll go in and we'll take some green, olive green here, sap green, olive green. Maybe a little bit of um, cobalt blue to make a darker green there. And we'll just fill in some greens here. And what I will do is leave some, I'm going to leave some white paper in between the flowers in this arrangement. You'll notice I will leave some white paper, even though the photograph might have. mostly greens and flowers in there. I'm going to try to leave a little bit of white paper in there. So we'll just we're going to try to keep ourselves here uh, from overworking too much. Let's not go I'm using more now uh, the Rose Matter, a little bit lighter than the Elizabeth and Crimson, a little more transparent. And I just, uh, once I get some lines on there, then I rinse my brush off and then I tap off some water so that I don't get too much water on the paper. And I sort of see where the I refer back to my photo. That's all. And over here we can start. And I think it's better to sometimes work on it a little bit, the flower shapes. And then we can let it sit there for a bit and dry a little bit. And then we can move around. We can start maybe doing some of these darker flower shapes here, or uh, leaf forms here. And uh, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> so I'm working around the painting. No sweat, just Sometimes what I'll, I'll do is, this is a little more stressful, doing the roses here. It's more fine, fine work. 
So I'll do a little bit of that. Then I'll just go to another area where it's a little bit more simple. Uh, these um, green leaves here, these are kind of simple, right? So we can, if you start to feel tight, like you're, oh, I'm stressing over these flowers here, start a few of them, and then you move around the painting and you come over here, do a few of the green leaves. Those are simple, just to do the green leaf forms like so. And next thing you know, you're kind of helping yourself to de-stress a little bit as you're painting around the painting. And we'll just do a little splash or two, that always helps. And then, um, there's some shadow over here, some purple, we'll use some purple uh, lizard, uh, this is um, ultramarine violet. And there's also some cadmium lemon yellow. I can see here in these uh, lilies. So let's I'm going to put a little of that cadmium lemon yellow in the lilies here in the center, and then a little bit of the purple mix to give a little bit of a shadow that's in the center of the leaf. And I'll charge in a little bit of that purple too into the center of the uh, lily there. And we can even go in and do a little bit of a darker tonal value in the center of the lily, but that we wouldn't want to do right now. Once we add in color, that's pretty much what we're going to stick with. So once that paper, once the paper starts to get color and water on it, there's only so much you can really work on at that point. We couldn't go in and do a darker tonal value right now in the center of this, like a fine, fine shape or anything like that. We would just have to let this dry and then we can come back and do some more work in there. And we'll just continue on here. We'll use some rose matter here, and there's a lizard and crimson, rose matter. These are lighter forms, so I dry off the uh, brush a little bit and the water, and then I can get those lighter shapes. That looks good. Sap green, cobalt blue. Even some French ultramarine blue. Darken it up even more. Even a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. And if I do that, I'm going to try to do that around the painting a little bit. So if I darken up and use a darker uh, color, I'll tend to try to m bring it around the painting and move it around a little bit into different areas so I don't look, so the painting doesn't look like there's like one color just over here and then the, it's n not seen anywhere else. <clears throat> okay, this is going well. Let's take a break. Um, we've gotten a nice bit of color in here. Um, things are going good. We have some pink roses here. We have some red flower shapes here. We have some good green um, leaves happening, which are in the photograph. So we Okay, so we'll take a break, we'll come right back and we'll 
just get we'll get started again. We just want to take a just a quick break to uh, relax just a little bit. Okay, so we're getting right back into painting. I think I took about a 15, 15 minute break, so everything's pretty much dried so far really well. So now we can do anything we really want um, as far as adding in any uh, darker tonal values, any details, really anywhere in our uh, flowers. And uh, we'll be fine. We don't have to worry too much about um, uh, anything uh, being uh, wet where it's going to um, blossom and ca cauliflower and, and uh, have an issue with the... Uh, the paint. So here, I just wanted to go with a few, a few finer details here, like so. And a little bit of straight cadmium lemon yellow. And a little bit of ultramarine violet. I rinse my brush, dry off some of the water. A little bit of that purple color there. Okay. <clears throat> we can do some more. We'll start off. I'll go into a lighter tonal value, a little bit of that green mixed in with some of the uh, cadmium lemon yellow. And maybe we'll do another little bit of some more rose matter here. Lizard and crimson, pretty much straight. Straight tube color. Move my brush around a little bit, try to get those shapes of the petals of the flower. And we have over here Try to do a little bit of sap green. We'll do the more green sap green. And some more of that lighter tonal value, olive green. You can make some darker green with a little bit of a French ultramarine blue if you want, or some, and even add in some of the 
burnt sienna. You can have fun with greens, mix up different ideas. Okay, and then we're going to do another rose over here. And again, I do those swirly lines a little bit. I rinse my brush off, take some of the water off with a tissue just to get those lighter tonal values. Then we go into that darker green. Okay, I'm going to rinse some water here. <clears throat> so I'll empty my water pail, for some fresh water. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, let me see here. I'm going to work, let me work into that lily a little bit over here. It's got that like cadmium lemon greenish color in the center of the lily here and then it kind of has that purpley feel as it moves out toward the, the petals. And then I can uh, rinse my brush, dry off the brush and then just lighten that that uh, hard edge out a little bit around that shadow to create that shadow feel. And the same here, this is okay. Once in a while. you for some reason if you kind of lose track of a flower within your bouquet and you don't see a way of being able to put it back in again it won't look correct then the best thing to do is just to let it to change something so here um, I have There was a lily in the center here I think I did draw and I might have painted over it with some green leaves thinking that it was a green leaf I was seeing and that happens occasionally. But with the fun thing about flowers you don't have to worry you can just create another flower shape in here so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create another rose here and just like this and that's fine. And the center is a little darker, some of the shadowing in there, like that. And 
and then I'm going to go in with some greens. And that's fine. We have plenty of interesting flower shapes here. And I think we're good. I think we're actually... We'll do some of the, the ferns. And that's... Um, I'll use my number eight. Um, Sap green, a little bit of that uh, burnt sienna, a little bit of cobalt blue over here, and I'm just going to do that fern like so, and then just have some fun. I'm doing some good. Maybe a little bit of cadmium lemon yellow. This one might be a little lighter. And I try to do each side. The ferns tend to be the... The sprigs on the ferns are separate from one another on each side, so I wouldn't go across uh, like a... Um, in a straight line. I would do each side separately. It looks more realistic, I think. And then I'll go back in. A couple splashes. There's a leaf here, I think I see, so I'll do that. Looks fine. We have a we can do a um pink and purplish vase here. That's the color I see. And um, some blue. Some shadow under here. Then I rinse off the brush, dry off the paint and water on there, and just soften that out. And we're just going to pretend this is the shadow side over here on the left, and then there's light over here. On this side, we'll do a little bit of shadowing, some we'll do some shadowing here. We can make the shadow darker. Just added some darker co colors just to <clears throat> then we will do a little and we can 
have a little fun here. We're just going to get some color over here on the sides. So we'll call this behind the, uh, the table. So we want to just have a little bit of some wash back here. I'll just kind of fade it up, upwards. And I'll keep it in the same colors, purple, pink. We have some grayish colors, so we'll just blend that in. Ties it all together. And some splashes here and there. And then what I will do is I'm going to try to I'm going to do some tablecloth ideas here. So we'll kick it up a notch. We'll add in some tablecloth uh, design maybe. Just to add some interesting design to this. So we'll let this dry though. Let's let this dry for about maybe 10-15 minutes. We'll come back. We'll add the rest of these leaves. Hanging leaves here. Forms. And we'll do maybe um, we'll do a nice um, Maybe a striped tablecloth or checkered. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, we're going to just, again, add to the design versus um, just, you know, leaving it as is. We're, we're going to kick it up a notch, add some uh, nice designs on the tablecloth to give it more um, interesting uh, excitement. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so we took a break again, and uh, we're going to just uh, finish up our painting here. Beautiful flowers in a vase, a bouquet in a vase. Uh, we have um, decisions here. We can perhaps uh, leave it more simple like this. Um, that's fine. We can also, um, again, like I was, uh, I mentioned in the beginning, does this make sense? Uh, once in a while, don't feel locked in to um, keeping everything the same. You can always uh, go in and, and change a few things, add a few things um, to your painting. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually add in here some details to the uh, the tablecloth on this table, and you know you can you know you can do this as well. I'm going to um, I'm just going to make it a, a kind of more simple uh, um, maybe a striped. So just I'll keep and I'm thinking we'll make this like maybe some uh, some blue stripes on here. That'll make it more interesting and then uh, our background we might leave I think the background looks pretty good. So we just did our simple um, tablecloth here and what I'll do is we have pretty much I'm going to get some clean fresh water I will uh, I'll just wipe, get the palette um, so we have some clear working surfaces here. Looks good. And uh, we'll use our larger number uh, 8 Raphael uh, Kalinsky Sable. And I'm thinking we'll look at maybe some cerulean. Maybe some cobalt. So maybe we'll use cobalt and uh, cerulean blue for our blue stripes. And 
that wouldn't be perfect. I wouldn't be perfect, you know, as far as exact, you know. I'd make some light and dark areas with the stripes. And cerulean and cobalt. The main thing is to um, I think is to make sure that we keep our focus so that we make sure we do the stripes every other. So I'm kind of being careful to keep track of that. I paint right through the shadow. And that seems pretty good. Maybe I add a little bit of purple here and there. Just to give it some variety. Here there's some shadowing. Um, I'm going to do some shadowing on this here. Cadmium lemon yellow, since we use that in the painting, that'll look good, just a little bit. Out a little darker. And I'll just add a couple splashes. pretty good. That gives it some more interesting detail to the painting. And the only thing we have to do is let it dry again for just, you know, a little while. 10-15 minutes and then we can add in the, uh, the rest of our leaves, uh, these hanging leaf forms here with the vines. So I think that's all we have to do. So we'll just give ourselves another break. I might add in a little more shadowing. That looks a little bit That just seemed a little bit uh, too warm, that shadow, so I added some of the purple. That looks a little better. Maybe a little bit of olive green. Okay, we're going to take another 10 minute break. We'll let this dry a little bit in these sections here where we have these leaf forms. 
five or ten minutes, I think, and it actually might be good. Let's continue here. I think that looks pretty good. So I will, some sap green, olive green, burnt sienna, cobalt blue. And I'm doing these really quick. I'm not going to fuss with them too much. I'll also change up the color a little bit. Cadmium lemon yellow mixed in there. And that tends to work, just kind of making quick moves with the brush in the shape of the um, leaves. I'll use the needlepoint brush here and we'll just get some stem, stem shapes, or some uh, the vines. That looks good. So we have um, everything is looking fine. I think we can go with a little more detail on the um, leaf forms. I think these could, could be a little more. They see yeah, the leaves are larger at the top of the uh, the vine area here. So I just wanted to do that quick, and that looks fine. The leaves get smaller as they go down these these vines, so I just enlarge those leaves a little bit with a couple quick brush strokes. Um, the way the leaf grows outward. Good point on this brush. And. Uh, That's that's good. I might add a little bit of different color variation to the stripes of the just here and there, just so that it kind of adding in that little bit of the green mix to the blue ties it in with the rest of the painting. And a little bit of the red, maybe, too, as well. The alizarin crimson. I'm 
just a little bit of that subtle colors around moving them around the painting and getting them into the different areas really makes a big difference. I don't know if it kind of you can see it on the camera so much on the picture on the painting here but when you do add those colors in real subtly just it kind of just harmonizes the rest of the painting together. All right, I hope everyone had a fun time again. Hey, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We're doing flower paintings like this all the time um, on my channel here. Where we're gonna do a lot more to come in the future. We're gonna do all types of flower paintings, different, um, we'll do some still life uh, paintings with flower arrangements and then just some maybe simple flower type forms that we can do for maybe uh, a really nice, simple, more simplistic painting. This one is a little more you know, has more things going on in it. Sometimes we'll just focus in and do a simple one or two flowers with some really nice washes of paint. So we're always doing things different here. That's why I say if you subscribe, you can always check it out. You'll get that notification. If you hit the notification bell, you'll know that my video is coming out. Anything new coming out on a week by week basis, you can kind of see what, uh, you know, what I'm doing. And if you like these uh, flower paintings, absolutely for sure, you know, I'm going to be doing more in the future. So you can, um, Tune in when, when you feel you want to work on flower style paintings. It's my one of my favorite things to paint is flowers, flower arrangements, things like that. Still life. They're fun, they're colorful, and they're uh, very doable for a beginner painter as well as people that have been painting a long time. You can have a lot of fun with flower paintings and uh, we'll just kind of Peel that off and all right and then we'll go right back to the beginning again so in the beginning of this video you'll see this finished painting um, and you can uh, hit the pause button if you want and draw and paint from it uh, or you can also look up the pictures that I have um, on my cell phone, you can look up those online and uh, use those too if you want. Okay, we'll see you very soon. Happy painting.